Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship today, especially those joining us online. Uh, we are so glad that you are here. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, and for this season of Lent, we are focusing on the care of creation. And every Sunday of Lent, we will be focusing on a different aspect of our creation. And today is Animal Sunday. Um, I had to pull this out because I couldn't remember the orders that we were doing this in. We have um, Animal Sunday, uh, Oceans and Lakes, Storms and Weather, and Cosmos Sunday. Um, and so for the, the next four weeks, we will be focusing um, on the lament of how we have not taken care of it and the joy that God is continually continuing to renew it and how we can partner in that renewal and, um, and give thanks to God for the gift of creation that we have around us. Um, there are five Sundays in Lent, you heard me say four. Um, the fifth one is going to kind of be a recap and we're going to have kind of like a lessons and carols and highlighting um, all of the elements that the first four weeks have gone. So um, I'm really excited about that and excited that the youth, our confirmation class, has been helping put this together and will be participating and helping us lead it today and for the Sundays during Lent. Um, their confirmation lessons during Lent um, are focusing on the care of creation and ways that we can help improve our environment, um, what we call environmental stewardship. And so um, we're really excited about that opportunity of learning as well. Are there any community announcements or concerns we need to be made aware of at this time? I have a couple of things. This was also to be passed out this morning, so there are some at the back and some at the front. So if you would like to know about the animals that have recently went extinct in our 21st century, uh, pick one of these up. Uh, another thing that was brought to my attention, when the newsletter went out, we, um, I, uh, omitted a couple of birthdays that we want to make sure that we get. So if you Please read your newsletters, and if you happen to notice that there isn't a birthday listed in March or April that should be, let me know, or Pastor knows, so we can make sure that we announce that on Sunday morning. Our most updated list went AWOL, so an uh, older AWOL. list was, um, was utilized, and we noticed that some birthdays were missed. Um, but it's not because we don't love them, um, it's because um, our, our list got adapted. So <laughs> it's just going with our, our season. <laughs> um, Pastor, yes. Could you remind us of the food pantry? It's in the newsletter, the times and dates uh, for the truck and yes. serve. Please. Thank you. Give me two seconds, I will find it. The truck is. Monday, March 14th at 9.15, and they'll need help unloading the food pantry on, uh, and then the food pantry is serving on Saturday, March 19th from 8 to 10, and they, we will need workers for that. All right, March 19th. All right, newsletter has amazing stuff in it, um, and so, and if you ever have anything you want to add to our newsletter um, and things to contribute, just let myself know or, or Diane Hyatt, and we'd be more than happy to, to include that. All right, there are no other announcements. I will pass it off to our youth who will be leading us this morning. Please rise. Blessed by the Holy Trinity, one God, who forms the earth, redeems all creation, and sustains life. Amen. Let us confess our sin as we admit how we have failed to love God's good creation. Restoring God. We confess that we have sent our plastic and chemical waste into the waters. We have caused so many species to be 
become a danger or extinct. Our choices have caused storms to increase considerably and have other patterns to become unstable. We exploit the cosmos for our own gain. We despair at what we have done and in that feel helpless. Save us from ourselves. Forgive us and renew us, loving God. Remind us of how you value each and every living thing. Inspire us so that we can protect your bountiful creation. Amen. By the grace of Jesus Christ, God forgives you of your sin, and you are made whole. Free from your burden of despair, be led by the Spirit to do God's restorative work in the world. Amen.
provider, you feed the birds with the air and clothe the flowers of the field. Show us how we interfere with the natural habitats and the good they provide for all creation. Refocus our efforts to, be, to better partner with your restoring ways. Bless animals, animal habitats and nature preserves so that they may continue to provide for all in the interwoven web of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear what God's Word has to say to us this morning. A reading from the book of Job. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Can you remember the month that they fulfill? And do you know the time when they give birth, when they crouch to give birth to their offspring and are delivered of their young? Their young ones become strong. They grow up in the open. They go forth and do not return to them. Who has let the wild ass go free? Who has loosed the bonds of the swift ass? to which I have given the step for its home, the salt land for its dwelling place. It scorns the tumult of the city. It does not hear the shouts of the driver. It ranges the mountains as its pasture, and it searches after every green thing. Is it by your wisdom that the hawk soars and spreads its wings toward the south? Is it at your command that the evil mounts up and makes its nest on high? It lives on the rocks and makes its home in the fastness of the rocky crag. From there it spies the prey, it eyes, its eyes see it from far away, its young ones suck up blood, and where the slain are, there it is. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is 104, beginning at the 14th verse. Let's read it antiphonally. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use to bring forth food from the earth. And wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the conies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young lions roar for their prey. Seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their den. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. The second reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw the right hand of the one seated on the throne, a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seal? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And they began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll in its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders, a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, 
each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Silly things. Help us to 
to trust in you more. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. When, um, several years ago, actually, it was more than several years ago, it's when Trace was a baby. We lived in the suburbs of Chicago and we um, had an annual pass to Brookfield Zoo. And we went at least once a month. We went often, and the kids were little, because Trace, I'm not even sure if Trace really remembers going there as a stroller child. Um, but Heidi and Nate, being um, five and seven years older than him, have some, some mem memories there. And there is a children's part of the zoo. You have to pay a little bit extra, of course, uh, to get in there. And there's so many neat, hands-on activities in this children's center of Brookfield Zoo. And they often have volunteers um, there with animals that you can touch. Some of them might be reptiles, and would be like bunnies. Um, and those hands-on experiences, it's a very experiential, kinetic, engaging environment. But you'll, you'll see a sign there. It will say, at this children's center, you're not going to hear us talk about endangered animals or the crisis that our world is going through on the care and upkeep of animals. Because we want our children to learn to love and enjoy animals before we ask them to save them. And so it was just this amazing experience without seeing the signs of the, the gloom and doom um, that often accompanies when you go to zoos and you see the sign of are they endangered or what is their rate scale. Um, it, it was just a powerful um, image for me to realize, yes, this is a way for our kids to engage um, and to fall in love with God's creation before we ask them to help us in saving it. So, with that being said, I thought I would share some amazing animal facts on this Animal Sunday that just can be awe-inspiring of how diverse God's creation can be. Butterflies can taste with their feet. Who knew? Here's another one. Sharks kill less than 10 people each year. And yet so many people are terrified of sharks. But yet, cows kill approximately 100 people a year. I don't, I don't know many people who are terrified of cows. Um, but yes, cows kill more people than shark on, sharks on a yearly basis. Who knew? Wild dolphins call each other by name. I think that's fascinating. Did you know that young goats pick up accents from each other? And here's why, and I, I included it, um, I found it fascinating. Most people know that squirrels and I don't get along uh, because I find that they're evil, they taunt me, they swear at me, um, I have issues with squirrels. Um, but did you know that squirrels <laughs> Squirrels can't burp or vomit? <laughs> Who knew? Did you know that dogs, that a dog's nose print are as unique as human fingerprints? Did you know that alligators can live up to 100 years? I know, that's amazing, isn't it? Did you know that if you were to have a staring contest with our snake, Gerald, he would always win because snakes can't blink. Snakes don't blink, so they will always win in a staring contest. Did you know that a single elephant tooth can weigh as much as nine pounds? Jake is just blown away here. <laughs> This one I found fascinating too. Whale 
heart, whale hearts beat only nine times a minute. Nine times a minute. Do you know how much your heart beats in a minute? It, it can beat up to a hundred. That'd be a little fast unless you're doing some exercise. For your age, your resting heart rate's probably around 70, 75, give or take. If you're really healthy and chill, your resting heart rate is going to be in the 60s, the low 70s. Kids are a little bit higher, but you go and exercise, it's going to be in, in the 100s. Um, nine times a minute for a whale. That's crazy. Here's one that's crazy too. Baby elephants will suck their trunks for comfort. I was a thumb sucker. Trace was, Heidi was. Uh, I never imagined a baby elephant would be. Here's another one. Did you know that ants never sleep? Ants never sleep. And here's my final fun animal fact. Hippo sweat is pink. <laughs> now, go play some trivia. <laughs> that is just a small amount of facts that we can learn about animals. You know, apparently a polar bear's skin is black. But it's for, how does it go, Trace? It, it, it's clear in the sun um, shines so it makes it white, but if you were to shave a polar bear, it would be black. It's crazy. Uh, uh, amazing things about animals and what we can learn from animals and how they adapt. And um, I'm always in awe of, of God's creation. And yet, we do lament. Much lamenting happens in our animal world. Um, I pulled up and I made copies for everyone to go with our lament. Animals that went extinct in the 21st century. That means since the year 2000. Since the year 2000. In 2014, the Bermuda saw wet owl went extinct. It disappeared. It's native to Bermuda, and the reason it went, in, in, went extinct is unknown, but maybe due to the decline of cedar and palmetto trees, or the arrival of non-native predators and competitors. The Formosan clouded leopard went extinct in 2013. It's native to Taiwan. And the reason is extensive logging of natural habitat. The Cape Verde giant skink, which is native to the Cape Verde Islands, disappeared in 2013. The reason it was hunted for food and skink oil by natives. The Pinta Island tortoise, native to Pinta Island in Ecuador, disappeared in 2012 due to hunting. The Japanese river otter, native to Seto Inland Seas in the Uwa Sea, I'm sure I slotted those names, um, they disappeared in 2012 due to hunting in the past, pollution, and human development during recent times. The western black rhino, native to sub-Saharan Africa, disappeared in 2011, poaching. The eastern cougar, which is native to northeastern North America, disappeared in 2011 due to hunting and decline of its primary prey, the white-tailed deer, also due to hunting. The spotted green pigeon, native to islands in the South Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. It disappeared in 2008. The reason hunting and um, being predators by animals introduced to that area that were non-native. The Baiji dolphin. It's native to the Yangtze 
The Yangtze River in China disappeared in 2006 because of industrialization and heavy use for the river for fishing, transportation, and hydro hydroelectricity. And then there's the Pyrenean ibex, native to the Iberian Peninsula. It disappeared in 2000 due to hunting. If you look, you will find a very sad list. This is the most recent, but in the past hundred years, extinction is becoming a reality to many of our plants and animals, mostly because of human interference. And we lament, we weep, God weeps for the brokenness in our world. But we're not helpless in our lament. There are things that we can do, and those are things that our youth are, are looking into. How to be stewards, environmental stewards. Things we can do. We can support conservation efforts. Zoos and wildlife sanctuaries are our primary sources right now for those conservation efforts. Supporting our national parks and our national forests. Talking to our legislators about legislation that protects our habitats. Educating ourselves, realizing how our backyard is a habitat and what are things that we can do in our own backyard, in our own towns, that can be helpful and encouraging for wildlife. Now, we're, my husband is from the suburbs, so he likes a nice clean yard. So when he sees things that say, don't break your leaves in the fall because they're good places for environment, or for, for nature in the winter, he's just, he'll roll his eyes at that. He's like, yes, that's not wrong, but he doesn't want leaves all over his backyard. Um, you'll see signs of, instead of recycling your tree at the front, put your Christmas tree in your backyard, um, and animals um, can utilize it, and can hide, and um, eat off of it, and survive through the winter. My husband's like, I don't want a dead tree in my backyard. But we can have composting. We can um, use pest controls that are ways that are healthier to our environment. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing um, in confirmation is we're going to be building bird houses and bat houses. Bat houses um, are simple projects that we can put together to encourage bats to live in the bat house instead of your own house. And if you have bat houses, your yard will naturally have less mosquitoes in it. It's a win-win situation. So those are some of the things that we're going to be learning um, and educating ourselves on. Also being mindful of how we recycle and how we get rid of garbage. Um, Trace recently found an article that um, masks are now starting to be uh, an issue because um, wildlife is getting caught up in, in the bands, um, um, birds especially, and that when you throw out these masks to, to clip them, so um, in the same way that the plastic rings for the soap for our Coke cans and, and our, our, our pop that we cut them, so you know, is this going to hurt animals um, when, if they get into them? Um, educating yourself and others on the care of our environment, um, on how we look after the animals in our world. Um, that is part of joining with God in recreation of realizing that God has not given up on humanity, that even as we weep at the destruction, 
that we ourselves have caused, we can be partners and advocates for animals in our community. We have so many witness in scripture of how God not just loves humans, but all of creation. And um, I find comfort in knowing that our scripture writers are in awe of animals as well. From the book of Job to our Revelation reading, um, one that wasn't even included. Um, the very last part of, of the book of Jonah, where Jonah's throwing a fit because people are getting saved and, and um, God's not destroying a, a group of people he thinks should be destroyed. And the last thing of Jonah is, you know, God can choose to save whoever God wants to, and he just saved all these people plus many animals, which tells us that animals are a part of salvation and part of God's story of restoring all creation. Um, I find comfort and hope in that. When we do worry, as, as Sharon says, we as humans tend to do, um, we look to our animals. They don't carry that anxiety. They're not worried about what happened yesterday. They're not worried about what's going on in the future. Seeking first the kingdom of God, being here in the present, being in that glory of God at this moment, in this time, and not letting all the cares and worries of the world weigh down upon us. Animals can gift us with that. We can learn from them. I take delight in animals every day. In fact, many of you have probably heard me say that when I was little, I was um, fed up with people because I saw the destruction that we often do. And I just wanted to be a hermit and I was going to run away and live with animals in the mountains. Um, because there is something powerful and godly of the basic innocence and wonder of creation, of animals. God is continuing to work through creation to work with us, partnering with us to live in this amazing world that we call home. May we rejoice in God's animals. As we lament, may we be empowered to take the steps necessary in advocating for a better world and better care for all of us, especially our animals. Amen.
Let us now profess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize by saying together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawing close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, sharpen this proclamation of the word, so that your people will learn to reject the voices of deception and destruction. Strengthen all who are tempted to believe wise about themselves and others. And our congregational prayers for this week, we pray especially for Lance, Kaylin, Hadley, Layton, and Lennon Pearson. Strengthen them in their baptism so they may continue the ministry you have called them to. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect wilderness places and all plant and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and with all laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the na nations of the world, world, especially the country of Ukraine. Awaken all lots of leaders and government officials to the needs of those who are oppressed and grant them compassion to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees who reside among us. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We pray for those who are in need. Rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction. Ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. Command your angels concerning all who are sick, especially Betty, Dick, Myrna, Jeanette, Linda, Chuck, Carl, Doreen, Phil, Ryan, Keith, Gary, and Jeremy. Merciful God. We pray for this assembly. Bless those who bake bread and prepare the table for our communion celebration. Accompany those who share the bounty of this meal with those who are homebound or hospitalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died. Gather them and with all the saints into your heavenly dwelling place. Encourage us the promise that you call upon your name are saved. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of the world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also At this time, let us creatively share God's peace with those around us this morning. God's peace. Our giving is an act of worship, and at this time, we receive our offering.
from the ages and every from the heavens. Receive the gifts we bring as we care for oceans, lakes, and all habitats. To the glory of God, in the name of Christ, our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who orders the cosmos, sets the water's boundaries, gives the breath of life to all creatures, great and small, and empowers storms to wash over and renew the earth. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. our smallness against the vastness in which our island earth floats. Blessed are you for whales and krill, for eagles and sparrows, for tigers and meerkats. Blessed are you for the diversity of life and the joy it offers as we consider our place alongside all animals with whom we share our ecosphere. Blessed are you for vast oceans and small ponds, for the great lakes and salty seas, for beaver dams and coral reefs. Blessed are you for all sources of water and the thrill they provide as we celebrate our dependence on water for work, play, and quenching our daily thirst. Blessed are you for lightning and wind, for hailstone and snowflake, for raindrop and rainbow. Blessed are you for the fascination of storms and the power they display as we fathom our reliance on weather patterns that bring cleansing and renewing gifts to earth. Blessed are you for Jesus, the Christ, the Word incarnate, through whom all things have come into existence and through whom all things will receive rebirth. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Almighty provider, this meal reminds us that the consequence of sin is brokenness. Yet in the resurrection of the Lamb, what was once broken is now being healed. Fill us with urgency to be agents of that healing. Unite us through the bread and cup we share, that trusting your redemptive work in all creation, we may be better partners of renewal as we await our Lord's return. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of the cosmos, breath of life, source of nature's power, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. There is enough for all.
which you dream into existence every day. Send us now filled with your goodness, striving for the better world you envision. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are there any joys, shout-outs, birthdays, celebrations we would like to share today? Yesterday, Karen's death had a birthday. Karen. <laughs> Anyone else? The only one. So. All right, Karen, this is for you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So if people would want to let me know so I can put them on a list so we can get those. So we don't want to... Any other out. good news that we want to share? If not, the youth are going to lead us in our final blessing. You just do it right there. Of oceans and lakes. Of prairie dog and Of spring rains and winter squalls. Of Pluto and Mars. Bless, keep, and strengthen you all. Creation today, tomorrow, and always. Thanks be to God.